So first of all, I would really like to thank you to give me the opportunity to show uh, my research. Uh, this research I only started in September as a part of my master thesis. Um, I just graduated. Um, so I'm working on early medieval combs, uh, mostly made out of antler. Uh, so when you see this object, uh, there are actually different ways how you can approach that. You can um, look like, okay, where did I find the same kind of uh, combs, like the same form, the same length? Or you can ask yourself like, okay, how did the comb maker make this comb? Uh, what tools did he use? What techniques did he use? And some people will ask themselves like, okay, why were this comb used? It's not always to comb the hair. Uh, sometimes the combs are really large, so they don't know really know they don't really know why they were uh, used. So that's a third question that we can um, ask ourselves about this object. There are different methods uh, that we can use to answer these questions. First of all, the typological uh, approach, like the more traditional one, um, to know how what tools are used is the experimental research combined with a macroscopic analysis, so what you don't use your microscope. And at the end, the function, we could um, see if we can use some microware on it to know why the call was used. In my research, I combined all those four methods uh, together uh, and see if there were resemblance or not. Um, these four methods were used in a Schöner Operatoire um, as, yeah, thing. So first, uh, I would look at the av availability of uh, the raw material. I used mostly antler. First of all, we can look um, from where the antler was. So was the antler of reindeer or red deer? what all would already give you an insight for wh what region it comes. Uh, the zooms analysis is used for that. Uh, second of all, we can look like, okay, what kind of uh, antler was it? Was it shed antler or antler from slaughtered animals and everything? But um, Then we can look to the production where um, this talk is uh, more in that side of uh, the Chêne Operatoire than the use and uh, the deposition. So in what context uh, was the calm deposit? Um, I used the method on calms in the north of France um, from Quentovic, which is a settlement, uh, is in pre-urban uh, settlement uh, around the sixth century, and Hamash, uh, which was more like an abbey. So it was two different contexts, and it was really interesting to see if there was a difference in there. These are some uh, examples of the comms. So first, um, I would like, I wanted to know like, okay, how can I interpret the traces that I find on the comms? And therefore I, was, I needed a reference collection and there is no reference collection uh, for medieval tools used on um, Antler. So I um, learned the techniques myself with um, Antler and um, bone workers from the Netherlands because in Belgium I couldn't find anyone who was really specialized in that. Um, I also literature, I consulted literature and um, also I had uh, analyzed uh, calm pieces from Antwerp in Belgium and also that gave me a lot of information what kind of tools he could have used. Uh, all those traces were <coughs> registered of course um, and also make, made a phase of production and a, made of use, uh, a phase of useware that I would like, uh, that I analyzed. I used two kinds of um, uh, microscopes, uh, the stereo microscope <coughs> up to 50 uh, magnification and secondly then the mechanographic microscope um, up to 200 magnification. Those microscopes uh, were available at the University of Leiden where I learned uh, the technique of microware because you can't do that in Belgium as well. Um, so it was with Annelou van Kien, um, who also did a lot, a lot of um, user analysis on lithic material. Um, so to define the traces, I used the terminology, who was um, already determined by uh, Le Grand and Sidera uh, in France, uh, two uh, archaeologists, but they used this terminology 
on bone. I use it on enter and I wanted to see if it was the same. So these are just a few um, examples of that. So you have the micro topography where they look at the distance of uh, the higher points, the higher points and the lower points. So when it, the distance is not that big, it, they call it homogeneous. Otherwise, they call it heterogeneous. Um, now I'm a mathematician, so Legrand and uh, Siderat they say, okay, it's the observer who will say if this is a big distance or not. But I um, would really like in in the in the future to find a way to actually measure that so that it's more scientific. Um, more terms are the micro relief, where they look at the top um, points and look if they are on the same height or uh, if there is a difference. And the striations are also really, really inter uh, interesting to study. Um, so these two terms will be studied at a higher magnification, 100 to 200. All these elements from every object. Uh, so these are actually the experiment numbers. And every time I so put the, this is in Flemish, so don't try to understand. But um, it's so you have the instrument and then all the parameters who correspond to that instrument. For Usewear, I uh, first looked at a, um, a teeth of the comb, what was not used, and then I used it for at least six hours on human hair. And uh, you already could see some traces, um, so that was really interesting. And I used to come also on horse hair because in literature they think some big combs are used on horses. Um, and there you also see, um, so after six hours of use, that there is traces, and those traces are uh, deeper and a bit wider. Um, I just explain where you find the traces. So first you have your comb piece like this. After use, I don't know if you see it, but you have a little bit of a shiny a shiny um, zone, and it's out on th those shiny zones that you find your first traces. But microscopically, so when you see the, the, the comb like this, you won't see those traces yet. On the archaeological ones, yes. So why is it a difference between human and uh, horse hair? Uh, well, I think it can be, but also there is a lot of research needed for that. That uh, because the human hair is um, not that big in diameter than the horse hair, and I think also in structure there is a difference. But the, we need to, to do more research research on that. So then come the very interesting parts uh, when we look at the artifacts. Um, so this is uh, a piece of an artifact uh, in Hamash. So where did I look for those production? Uh, traces. It's of course not at the outside of the calm because the calm was used and most of the time all those traces were gone. Uh, but at the inside, so a lot of combs are broken when you find them and at the inside uh, sometimes you can find some traces of uh, production. Um, it was a bit... Um, like I could use the Hamash comb because they didn't, they were not reconstructed, but the Quantific combs were reconstructed with glue, a lot of glue. So we, I couldn't see the traces there. So um, I use the same parameters, of course, for uh, the, ar the archaeological uh, artifacts. Also in the usewear. So here, here you see a piece of the teeth of um, um, a comb. And of course, you see here that you can see microscopically like this. You already see the traces um, on the comb teeth. But when we look uh, at them uh, in a ma microscopic way, but uh, here I used a SEM uh, microscope because in Leiden we had it for a few days and I had the opportunity to use it. Then you see here the little uh, traces also of the hair. So um, it's a very fine trace. So into the grooves you will find it. In a later stage, later, later research, I will try to use the comb really long. I think I'm going to make some in industrial thing because it's really impossible to do it myself, but to also replicate those grooves. So um, then when I have all the parameters of uh, the artifacts and of the experimental objects, we will try to compare that. I made um, a tree diagram because otherwise it's also a bit chaotic to find out what thing uh, links together. 
So I'm like, okay, I have uh, this microtopography and things like that. And then probably it will be done by file. Of course, we can never say that for real, but we can uh, exclude other other um, tools. So that I think is a good thing. Then um, at a la la later stage, we will interpret uh, those traces. In my case of Quentovic and Amash, we could see. Um, so this is um, a comb from Quentovic, and this is a comb of Hamash that the same uh, production technique was used. So the saw was used in the same way, the pins are put in the same way. And um, so they were, it, it looked like the person who made those cons came from the same production tradition, where um, in Quentovic itself, uh, so the, er the early urban settlement, you find different cons with a totally different <coughs> production tradition. So it could, it shows that um, it's not the same person um, who made it first. And we think of, in literature, they also say like in a production tradition is mostly linked to a region. So like, for example, this calm was found in Quentovic and in Hamwick. And they are the only two um, uh, sites where this calm, this type of calm was uh, found. So we can almost certainly say that there was a big connection between those two sites. Um, but I would like to also study the comms in Hamwick. In a, if I see the same production tradition, then we actually are sure. Secondly, uh, here, this one is not made up of bone, but out of antler. Uh, no, sorry. It's not made up of antler, but out of bone. And also there, you see another production tradition. So it could be that uh, the bone worker was different from the antler worker. So just. Then um, with the topology, I used the topology of Steve Ashby for people who are familiar with the um, topologies of cons. I also used other topologies, but it's a lot of more to talk, to, to talk about. Uh, but you see some um, real connections. So like the type 12B, will give uh, mostly uh, really big traces at the top of the teeth, where uh, the other um, types will give traces from the top until at the bottom. So it can give you also an insight in what, what they were used for. So why is this technology of this method interesting, I think, is um, because of that production tradition. It can really gives us a new insight uh, in like, those Scandinavian um, combs were really, I think, fashionable uh, in uh, the lowlands. And we don't know, maybe they came from Scandinavia, they used the same, topo same topology, or maybe they just imitated them locally. So that with the production tradition would be interesting <coughs> to see if we can see the difference. Also, we can see if the, the production depends on the raw material, we can have new insights in the traits and also why the combs were used, um, like on horses or not, but a lot of more research uh, needs to be done there as well. And we will, uh, it's nice to see the confrontation with the typological classification as well. And I think that's all.